movie. I, I watch a movie, Red Sparrow. I think it's called Red Sparrow. Jason Matthews. Yeah, Jason Matthews. What did you think about that? I know Jason Matthews. Okay. I worked with Jason Matthews. He was one hell of a case officer. Tony and I trained him um, in surveillance detection. Um, he showed us his overseas situation, which was awful. I, I did not imagine that he could write like that. I, I mean, the book. Fabu did you read the book? Oh, uh, Fabulous. Phenomenal. The movie, the movie was not so good, I didn't think. I met Jennifer Lawrence. I, I was on a stage with her, New York Times uh, reporter, and we talked about the story. And they did what they often do with the movies. They watered down the story to make it fit the arc that they, that, whatever. So I didn't like the movie. I thought the book was phenomenal. His, when he writes about surveillance on the streets of Moscow, I am with him foot by foot. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. well done. How much truth was there behind what he wrote about? I think there was a lot of truth. The, the, the one thing that nobody really knows, and I, <laughs> I haven't really asked him, is about the Sparrow School. I don't know that there is a school, but there are sparrows. Uh, our, our people um, and a lot of innocent Americans go over there and bump into them, these women who are schooled in seduction, and here they come. They have gone after our United States Marines at the embassy. Clayton Lone Tree was uh, the, only, the only United States Marine ever convicted of treason. And what happened to him? He was an American Indian. He met this beautiful young woman who was working at the American Embassy. Her name was Violetta Sena. Um, he seduced her. They had an affair. Then it appeared that he allowed some KGB people into our embassy, more than once. Then he got transferred to Vienna. And her uncle showed up in Vienna and said, you know, I want you to give us the plans to the embassy in Vienna. We want to come in here too. So he went to our chief of station and confessed, and he went to prison. He was there for eight years in jail. That's what a swallow, the kind of pandemonium that can come out of one of those cases. Red, Red Sparrow is the book, name, name of the book, but it, it was called Swallow, I think, based on what I, yeah, so. Uh, a swallow and sparrow are, are almost interchangeable. Got it. How much of that practice is used in U.S. intelligence? You know, it's not. We don't use that as a tool. That doesn't mean that there hasn't been a seduction here or there. It just happens sometimes. But it is not a tool of espionage that we use. I mean, it's a very effective uh, method. Very effective because men, uh, you know, uh, if, if you want to seduce men, you know, they're typically, they like good food and they like good sex. So Yes, yes they do. And there are old stories, and, and maybe there are some new stories. Um, but as a concerted tool, Tradecraft. It's it's not. That that doesn't mean there haven't been seductions. Got it. There are some good old stories. Uh, maybe some newer stories. M maybe um, a history of it. With the East Germans, for instance, with the Stasi, it was a tool of their of their tradecraft, especially when they went into West Germany. They had a group of men. We called them Romeos. They went they went into. Um, Berlin, they went into Bonn, and, and they, they were assigned particular women that were working in the West German government. They married them, they had children with them. It was, the whole thing was a mock situation. And when the wall went down, the men went home. And these women are like, really? really? I mean, it was their life, and it was, it was a fake. And that, it kind of comes out of that Soviet style of using sex as a, as a bargaining tool.